Hello everyone, for this week's Deck Tech, I want to revisit my first video to ever hit over 1,000 views, John Arenas' Shattered One, aka Demir Pokemon Daycare. In this Deck Tech, I'll explain what John does, the core strategies for the deck, key cards, how to win, and finally the upgrades. So without further ado, let's get into it. Generally, John is built to give your opponents creatures that have some form of downside, like Abyssal Persecutor, Rotting Regisaur, or Demonic Taskmaster. But I decided to go a different route with the deck. Instead, I want to give my opponents invasive creatures, play powerful ETB creatures, use Edict Effects to control the board, and then finally steal their creatures back from my opponents after they've been buffed. Hence the name Pokemon Daycare. Let's kick things off with the evasive creatures. Because John wants our gifted creatures to attack, we want to make sure they stay alive through combat, and the easiest way to do that is to have them be unblockable. So creatures like Changeling Outcast, Miscloaked Herald, and Slitherblade. Now my favorite unblockable creature is actually Blighted Agent thanks to Infect. The other types of evasive creatures are Flyers. Think Ornithopter, Fairy Seer, and Baleful Strix. Strix has the added benefit of cantripping when it enters. The best thing about giving away cheap creatures is people are less likely to waste removal on a 2-3 flyer that it's getting in for some chip damage. They do draw you cards, but do you really want a Swords to Plowshare and Ornithopter? The other type of creature I like to give away are Decayed Zombies. Now you might be thinking why would you want to give away a token that sacks themselves? Well it's simple. John's ability says they can't be sacrificed. This is true for any effect that requires you to sacrifice creatures. Some other examples would be Encore, Echo, and Fading. So creatures like Falcom Abomination, Fedar Ghoul Caller, and Diagraph Horde provide us with cheap tokens we can give away. Edicts are especially powerful because our opponents can't sack the creatures we so kindly gifted to them. So we can keep everyone's board cleared of their own creatures while leaving ours to attack freely and draw us a ton of cards. Obviously, I had to include Fleshbag Marauder, Merciless Executioner, and Plague Crafter. I even included some of the less played Edict creatures, such as Slum Reaper, which is a 4-mana Fleshbag, Bellowing Mauler, which is a repeatable Edict, and then the best Edict creature in the deck, Braid's Arisen Nightmare. This is thanks to the card advantage it can provide. The non-creature Edicts are especially mean. Killing Wave, Phonus Hunger, and Inevitable End. Quick rules note for Killing Wave. Because the donated creatures can't be sacrificed, the creature's controller can choose not to pay the life, and the creature just stays around. Next, let's talk about the ETB creatures, or Enter creatures as it's been shortened to officially. There are three categories of Enter creatures in the deck. Value, Removal, and Clones. The value creatures are like Gaunty Lord of Luxury, Solemn Simulacrum, and the already mentioned Baleful Strix. If you want to make some changes to the deck, I would suggest cutting these cards first, as they're just in here because they give us some card advantage, and we don't mind giving them away. The removal creatures would be Ravenous Chupacabra, Noxious Gearhulk, Amphim Mutineer, and Urtai Resurrected. These are creatures we can give away after they provided us with value. And Mutineer has Encore, and we can give away one of the Encore tokens. In total, we have four clone creatures in the deck. Two of them can only clone opponent's creatures, Malleable Imposter, and Mocking Doppelganger. These are a great way to give away multiple of the same creature, or get additional ETBs from creatures we've already given away. The other two are Phyrexian Metamorph and Spark Double. This can copy any creature. Now most of the time we want to use Spark Double to copy our commander to get additional end step triggers. I also included Arenas' File Duplication to clone our commander. After all, it's the namesake card. And finally, let's get our creatures back. There are two ways to get creatures we control back. The first is if the opponent loses the game. Now you might think the creatures would be exiled, but actually they would just return under our control. The other option is using cards that let us gain control of the cards we own. We can use a blink spell such as Teferi's Time Twist, but we want the creatures to have the counters on them, so that's pretty much out of the question. Instead, we will be using Homeward Path and Coveted Falcon. Homeward Path is a land and it's pretty simple. Tap it, we give everyone their stuff back. You can then give the creature away, putting more counters on it, and then taking it back again. Coveted Falcon is the newest card in the deck. Whenever it attacks, you gain control of target permanent you own, but don't control. And you can give stuff away to draw more cards, but I really don't care about that mode. Winning with this deck can be a bit tricky since we're giving creatures away. 
I would describe this deck as a political control deck more than anything. You want to try to sneakily have your opponents finish each other off while you lay in wait to strike the final blow. Try not to overextend, and you also want to make deals with the people who you're giving creatures to. Now, before we get into the upgrades, there is a cycle of cards I want to discuss real quick that didn't quite make the cut, and I think are probably wrong to include in the deck. That would be the Vow and Impetus cycle. The Vow cycle is Vow of Flight, Vow of Malice, and Vow of Torment. These are all 3-man enchantments that buff a creature and prevent them from attacking you. These are great when the game becomes a 1v1, because the creatures can't attack you even if they're goaded. Now the Impetus cycle, Ghoulish Impetus, Heresitic Impetus, and Psychic Impetus are not as great. See, these are like Vows, but instead the creature's just goaded and it gives you some benefit when they attack. These enchantments can provide pretty good value, but I don't think they're worth the include here. If I had to add one to the deck, it would be the Vow cycle. Unlike other decks on this channel, there aren't a ton of key upgrades I could think of for this deck. I mean, as always, I would suggest upgrading the mana base first, but if you want to spend a few extra bucks, you could always add Roaming Throne to double up on your commander's ability, Helm of the Host to get more copies of John, Phyrexian Obliterator because that seems like a fun creature to give away, or Sakashima of a Thousand Faces and Sakashima the Imposter to clone your commander for additional triggers. If there are any upgrades you think I missed, let me know in the comment section below. Also, make sure to check out my other video shown on screen here, and double check to make sure you're subscribed. Most of my viewers aren't, and it's an easy way to help out the channel. Alrighty everyone, I'll see you next time.